This week, a digression on just one word in Hebrews 12, 4 through 11. I think it happens, uh, occurs about eight or nine times. It's this word paideia, discipline. Correction. Jack put the wooden spoon in the apple pie when he was about three. We corrected him. Prevention. You train a child to control their sinful emotions when they're little, to prevent them causing catastrophe in bigger things when they're grown up. Then thirdly, education. Every day you're parenting a child, you're teaching your child, you're shaping them, you're educating them. God's parenting of us then is a bit, is a bit like that. Parenting involves many loving attitudes and actions. Comforting, forgiving, rewarding, speaking, affirming, just being together as a parent and child. I want to focus on this training feel of Hebrews 12 and this word translated discipline in the NIV. Discipline. It's a funny word. How does it feel for you? Uh, the Cambridge Dictionary describes discipline as training that makes people more willing to obey or more able to control themselves often in the forms of rules and punishments if they're broken. The Greek word is paideia. When the preacher to the Hebrews chooses the word paideia, what do they mean? Paideia in the New Testament is generally used in three ways. It's used to describe flogging as a form of legal punishment of a criminal. Luke 23, 16, Jesus was flogged, scourged, whipped, same word, he was innocent, by the way. Number two, paideia is used in 1 Corinthians 11 and other places for morally disciplining an adult to correct, to give guidance. And then paideia is used for child training, bringing up a child, guiding them toward maturity, used this way in Ephesians 6 here, instructing, training, educating. So the feel of this word is parental training, often with this painful aspect to it. And tonight I want to explore what form God's parental discipline of us as Christians take. In the Bible, I think, there are at least three distinct forms. Corrective discipline, preventative discipline, and teaching, uh, educational discipline correcting me, preventing me sinning and teaching me. First, corrective discipline. Sometimes God's children, me and you, undergo corrective judgment that comes directly from God's love. I think the prime example is King David after his adultery with Bathsheba, the lies and then the murder of her husband Uriah. This, These crimes, these sins brought down loving stiff parental discipline from a loving God. David's father God said in chapter 12 of 2 Samuel, the son of the immoral union would die and that calamity would then come into David's family, 2 Samuel 12, 10. So 2 Samuel 12 and following is the record of lo God's loving corrective discipline on David. Troubles, calamity galore in his home. His son Amnon raped his half-sister Tamar. And then David's own son Absalom stages a coup, rebellion against David, his dad. This was a stiff corrective, but David learned and grew in grace. Therefore, in Psalm 119, David says, verse 67 and 71, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Corrective discipline. Likewise, in the New Testament, the Corinthian church, uh, Kate read it on Sunday, underwent God's corrective discipline when some of its believers suffered illness and even death because they were dirtying the Lord's Supper. They were being horrible to each other, unkind and selfish and mean. There, Paul calls God's corrective discipline through illness being judged by the Lord, corrected by God, 
so that the Christians there would repent and get back on the right path. Harsh correctives, but they come from a heart of fatherly love. And as you're reading Jonah, ponder Jonah. God's severe corrective mercies, the storm, the near drowning, God's corrective discipline in Jonah. Secondly, preventative discipline. Sometimes God's discipline of us is to prevent sin in the future. God regularly allows his children to undergo hardships to prevent them from falling. The Apostle Paul, a humble man, nevertheless God gave him a thorn in the flesh to keep him from becoming proud, 2 Corinthians 12. Paul had great revelations from God carried into the third heavens, uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 8. It could have gone to his head. So God sent a trial, a thorn. We don't know what it was, but it tormented Paul. Paul prayed for the trial to be removed, yet God didn't. And God used it to prevent him, prevent him becoming conceited. And later he thanked God as he realised how this thorn had protected him and prevented him and kept him weak. Preventative discipline. And thirdly, educational discipline to teach us. Job. Job's afflictions were not corrective. Job was a godly man. He wasn't perfect, but he was really, really godly. And one of the number of reasons for Job's troubles was to instruct him. At the end, in his own words, Job writes, Here, now, I will speak, I will ask you, and you instruct me. I have heard of you, talking to God, I have heard of you, God, by the hearing of the ear, but now my e eyes see you. Therefore I retract and repent in dust and ashes. Job's afflictions taught him about God, about himself. From Job's example, then, we understand that painful experiences, painful discipline, painful trials may not come because we're doing badly as a Christian, but actually because we're doing well as Christians. Job was a spiritual athlete. And because Job was running well, God, like a wise coach, brought greater stress, greater challenge to Job so that Job might grow and know God even better. I think this is how we understand the sufferings of Jesus mentioned in the book of Hebrews. Jesus never needed correcting for sin, never. But his sufferings mysteriously mature, matured Jesus. They taught him and educated him. Hebrews 2.10 says, Jesus was made perfect through what he suffered. Or Hebrews 5.8 Jesus learned obedience from what he suffered. If Jesus needed teaching through suffering, then don't you and don't I. For me, I look back, I hope I learned lessons through things I've gone through, my, my dad's tragic death, I, I learned about prayer, my heart hopefully was softened through it. So there are these are at least three forms of God's parental training of us in the Bible. To correct me, David and Jonah. To prevent me getting into sins, Paul. And to teach me, Job and Jesus. Correction, prevention, education. So, here I am, a child of God. I've just knocked some, a bit of coffee over in the kitchen and uh, I brushed it up, and it was a bit of a hassle. It wasn't a hard knock, but what was God teaching me? <laughs> but hard knocks, more than knocking coffee over. Chronic illness, personal trials, tragic early death in your family, the loss of status, personal opposition, and then COVID frustrations, the disappointments, the turmoil. We are urged to reflect. How is God training me through 
What am I learning? Don Carson's very helpful book, How Long, uh, O oh Lord, Reflections on Suffering and Evil. I'm just going to paraphrase page 66 of that book. Don says, it's the uncertainty of what God is doing that sometimes breeds pain. Is the particular hardship, trial, blow I'm facing God's way of telling me to change something in my character, in my actions? Or is it a form of discipline designed to toughen me to make me more useful? Or is it a form of discipline designed to soften me to make me more useful? Or is the hardship that I'm going through just part of the inheritance of all sons and daughters of Adam? We live in this broken world and it's unrelated to fatherly discipline, but just part of God's mysterious providence. Then the Don Carson writes this. Must we always decide? If, if a little self-examination shows us how to improve in godliness... We ought to improve. Just a bit of self-examination and whatever we're going through and whatever the reason, we can improve in godliness just by thinking. But he writes, there are times when all that the Christian can do responsibly is to trust their Heavenly Father in the midst of the darkness and pain. God's parental training. Father knows best. May you and I learn to trust our Heavenly Father, trust him to take us through paths of pain, whether they are corrective or preventative or just to teach us paths that we would never have chosen ourselves. And yet we're learning life lessons that we would never have learned any other way. My Father knows best.